Yo, what's good, Bills Mafia? The Rev here, and you are now tuned in to episode 5 of Rated Rev, right here on the Buffalo Fanatics Network. All right, Bills Mafia, before we go any further into the show, you already know what to do. Like, comment, and subscribe. And if you are still not plugged into the Buffalo Fanatics Network, subscribe to the channel right now with all bell notifications on. Now let's keep it moving. Bills Mafia, welcome to the show. This is your man, Rev Rhodes, brought to you by the Buffalo Fanatics, and you are now tuned in to another edition of Rated Rev. Turn up, somebody. Look, I'm excited about this show this day. As you can tell, I've got something popping on behind me. It's kind of fire. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it, your boy is finally official. Shout out to my boys at BF, Pierre and Rico. They hooked your boy up with the with the with the fire hot BF backdrop and now it's official. So guys, my passion meter is going to be a, up a little a, another notch. So I hope you guys are ready for it. I hope you're ready for it, but I feel good. I feel good and I hope you guys feel good too. It's a good day anytime we get to talk about the Buffalo Bills. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. So, but last week, guys, we had talked about uh, the Buffalo Bills draft countdown. In case you didn't know, the NFL draft is right around the corner. And so the premise of last week's show was to highlight a couple of positions on the roster and rate them using emojis. And what I wanted to do going forward was as we approach the draft, highlight a couple of positions each week and rate them. And so today is going to be no different. Last week, we talked about the tight ends and the running backs, and you guys were coming for me about my running back picks because, you know, I said, you know what, running backs are like, oh, I was yawning at him, and I poo-pooed on, on Zach Moss, and, and Motor was okay, and we know how I feel about Duke Johnson and the rest of the, the guys. Like, I was like, nah, but you guys are coming for me because of my take, but it's all good. We're still family. OK, maybe you're going to come for me today as I talk about the wide receivers and cornerbacks. I don't know, but we're going to find out sooner or later. But that's what we're going to jump into today. But before we get into that, guys, I've got a new segment to introduce to the show, and it's called Around the NFL. Around the NFL, where we talk about the latest news around the NFL. Are you ready for it? Here we go. Number one, after what seems like an eternity in the NFL. The ageless wonder and future Hall of Fame running back Frank Gore is finally calling it a career as he intends to sign a one-day contract with the 49ers, the team that made him a third-round pick in the 2005 NFL Draft. Yo, salute to my dog and much respect for what he's done on the field and off the field. Number two. After the countless failed attempts by Matthew Judon to lure free agents to New England, the Patriots finally decided that enough was enough. They traded their 2023 third round pick to the division rival Miami Dolphins in exchange for wide receiver Devontae Parker and the Dolphins 2022 fifth round pick. Now look. Parker's a good receiver who's had bad luck on the injury front, and he's had mediocre quarterback play. Hopefully, hopefully, he can stay healthy going forward. But unfortunately, it looks like that trend of mediocre quarterbacks is going to continue in New England. Sorry, not sorry. Go Bills. Number three. Star-studded linebacker Bobby Wagner left the Pacific Northwest for the Sunshine State, signing a huge five-year, $50 million deal with the Los Angeles Rams. Number four, Bruce Arians announced his retirement, paving the way for my man Todd Bowles to become the new head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. A much-deserved second-chance opportunity for Bowles, and I really genuinely hope that all goes well with him and that team going forward, unless they end up playing the Buffalo Bills in the Super Bowl. Then I hope we smack them. <laughs> well, that concludes the first installment of Around the NFL Brought to you by your boy Rev Rose because I ain't got no sponsors, baby. This is how I do it. I'm flying solo. <laughs> Nevertheless, we're going to keep it moving, keep it moving. So now the Bills draft countdown. 
the Bills draft countdown. Are you guys ready for this? I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm like pumped about this. I am pumped about this because the NFL draft is right around the corner and we've got some positions to talk about. As I mentioned before, last week was tight ends and running backs, but this week is wide receivers and cornerbacks. So let's jump into this conversation. Let's jump in to the first position, and that is the wide receivers. You know, you know who, who they are. Some people like to call them the divas, but these are the dogs on the team. And if we look at the Buffalo Bills depth chart or just the roster um, at the wide receiver position, this is who we have so far on the roster. Stephon Diggs. We already know what it is. Gabe Davis, Isaiah McKenzie, newly signed Jamison Crowder, Jake Kumaro, Isaiah Hodgins, Marquez Stevenson, and Tanner Gentry. So we've got eight wide receivers so far on this roster. Now, no disrespect, but there's really only four wide receivers that I'm going that, that that we really need to talk about here, right? The rest, you know, we don't know about them. We don't. I mean, they're probably just going to remain um, on the bottom of this depth chart here. Um, maybe they get fortunate enough to get some playing time. I don't know. But let's just talk about the top four for now. Number one, Stephon Diggs. Stephon Diggs. That man, Diggs. Number fourteen, baby. That guy, well, we already know about him. Diggs, you know, the year before, 2020, led the NFL in receiving, right? We know who he is. The Bills traded for him, and as soon as he came to Buffalo, he had the best year of his career playing with Josh Allen. Last year, many would say, well, he had a slight regression. A slight regression, but he regressed to 103 catches for 1,225 yards and 10 touchdowns. That is still a phenomenal year for my man Steph Diggs in his second year at the Buffalo Bills with Josh Allen. Now, look, I don't really think much needs to be said about Diggs in terms of his talent or his ability of what he brings to the team. Um, he's a leader. It's flat out. The guy's a dog on the field. He's a leader. And 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 is it is is it finally about time that we squash all of that 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 nonsense that came out of Minnesota about about Diggs being this diva dude and 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 this guy who 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 can't get along with anybody on the team and he's just this drama queen. Can, can we finally squash all that nonsense? This guy has been nothing but professional since the moment he walked in to one bills drive he has been amazing on the field and off the field he's been phenomenal for josh allen and this offense but is but 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 the guy off the field has been great right we've had no issues with stefan diggs so all that talk with many i mean whatever maybe i mean i mean gosh i mean if you're, if you're catching passes from from kurt cousins I mean, maybe, I mean, maybe he'd have, a, a, you know, some slight of an attitude as well. You know what I'm saying? But now he's with Josh Allen, baby. Arguably the best quarterback in the National Football League. Yeah, I said it. Easily top five. Top three if you, if, if you feel froggy. You know what I'm saying? Josh Allen throwing the digs is money. It's money. And when I look at the future of this team, at the wide receiver position, Diggs is going to be here for the long haul. Look, I I, I know we, we we you know we have some 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 questions about you know signing Diggs, right? A lot of questions have come up lately about whether or not Diggs is is going to get extended. Is being going to extend him, and when is he going to do it? If he's going to do it at all, you know, we're looking at the wide receiver money that's just been thrown around this free agency, and it's like, oh my gosh. These teams are just like making it rain on these wide receivers. And Diggs is deserving of that type of money. The question remains, though, is Brandon Bean going to invest in Stefan Diggs 
in the long term and pay him that kind of money. I think he's going to do it. I think he has to do it. Right? That's that's just Josh Allen's guy. If you if you're interested in keeping Josh Allen happy and satisfied, you better make sure that his number one receiver, his main man, Stefan Diggs is here for the long haul. You you cannot let Diggs walk. You can't let him you can't do it. You've got to extend him. Now, whether or not he does it now or 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 in or you know in the mid mid season or, or after the season, I don't know. But all I know is that it has to get done. And I believe I believe Big Baller Bean is gonna make it happen. Stefan Diggs opens things up for this offense like like none other. He is the guy that that he's the do it all wide receiver. Right. And last year, I, f- I, I believe that. I mean, last year he, he probably could have um, he could have had the same statistical year as he did in 2020. But it but, you know, they 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 made sure that Diggs was healthy for the entire year, considering that there was an extra ye- uh, extra game in the regular season. Plus, they had sights on the Super Bowl making a long run in the playoffs. And so they wanted to keep him healthy. They didn't want to just feed him the ball constantly like they did last year. They wanted to save him for the playoffs. But it, but make no mistake about it. If they wanted to target Diggs like the Rams did Cooper Cup, my man would have killed it. He would have easily, uh, easily, had the same year as he had last year and probably would have eclipsed it if they would have just fed him. But I respect what they did. They wanted to keep him healthy and he stayed healthy for the year. But Diggs, man, going forward, that guy is the man, right? He is the man. I know how you guys feel about him, right? Uh, let me know. I, I, surely there is not anybody in here who thinks that he needs to be traded. Can we just like, oh my gosh, because believe it or not, I mean, that, that conversation has come up. I've seen it in Twitter about people talking about, you know, possibly trading digs for, you know, to move up in the draft. No, absolutely not. They say, well, the draft is deep and wide receiver and we can just, you know, trade digs. He's a, he's a valuable asset. You know, we can trade him to move up in the draft for, I don't know, whatever position cornerback, maybe, or whatever the case may be, you know, and then we can just draft another wide receiver because, you know, these guys are coming, I mean, you know, into the league ready. And this is a deep cl- look. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. Diggs is going nowhere. He's staying in Buffalo. Put that in pen and, and, and permanent marker. Okay. Now, let's keep on looking at the rest of the roster here at the wide receiver position. Because I could talk about Diggs all day long. Number two, we've got Gabe Davis. My man, Gabe Davis, guys. Look, now, I, I know... People are asking whether or not Davis is a bona fide number two. That's a conversation worth having and a conversation that we're going to have. But let's look at the production that he had last year. Gabe Davis had 35 receptions for 549 yards and six touchdowns. And he exploded. I mean, exploded in the playoffs. We know what he did in that divisional game, right? He took over that game, won the game for us with Josh Allen. And I think he could have had even a more productive year had he not been playing behind Emmanuel Sanders. Now, I get it. I get what, you know, why they did it, right? They wanted to add a veteran presence to the team, you know, much like they had the year before with John Brown, and they lost him, so they wanted to add another vet. I get it. And, and Emmanuel Sanders, he did good for the, you know, the early parts of the year, but then he just broke down. But Gabe Davis, let's talk about my man Gabe. Where do you guys see him going forward? Is he a bona fide number two? Is Davis a bona fide number two wide receiver? Well, to me, I say yes, he is. Now, 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 now the arguments are, are that, well, it's easy to say that when you, when you have Diggs on the other side drawing coverage away and then you had Cole Beasley in the slot and so that left Gabe Davis playing against the, the, the number defense's third 
cornerbacks, et cetera, et cetera. And look, we saw what Davis was able to do on the field. Now, now this year, granted, this year he's going to have to prove it. He's going to have to step up this year, right? The competition is going to step up. Teams are not going to be uh, uh, surprised by Gabe. They're going to come for him. But I, I believe that Davis is, is that type of dude, man. He's that type of animal who's going to put in the work in the offseason to get himself ready for this new season and for the competition that's going to try to come at him uh, in this year. But I love Gabe. I love what he brings to the offense. I love what he brings to the wide receiver room. This guy is a, I mean, first of all, I mean, he, he's, he's a different receiver, right? I mean, he's a big guy. What is it, like 6'2", 6'3", 210, or 215, something like that? He's a big guy, right? But and not only is he a big physical receiver, he's, he's, he's great um, in the run game, right? He's a great blocking wide receiver, which bodes well with Sean McDermott, right? He likes those physical guys on the edge. On top of that, man, he is this, like the sideline king, right? He is Josh Allen's outlet. He's looking for a pass along the sideline. Gabe Davis is going to be there to get it. That guy is, he is amazing on the sidelines. On top of that, he can jump up and get it. The high point, you know, 50-50 balls, he can do that. But then what people I think were surprised to see, myself included, was that he, he, he can actually get behind the defense. Like, he has sneaky speed, long speed, right, those long stride. I mean, he, he, he ran with like a 4-5 something in the 40 in his, in his combine, right? And people are like, well, I mean, that's not that fast. He's got, he's got game speed. He's not a track guy, but he's got games. You put on the tape, right? You put on pads and a helmet, you, and you, put on, you let him go. He can move, and he can get behind the defense. Surprises some dudes. Right. So, I mean, Davis can really do it all. And I am excited to see what he does coming into this year. Look, I don't know if you guys have seen it or not, but there is I saw, there. There has been a. Uh, uh, a video that they that gave posted on his Instagram about him working out. Already in the offseason, working out. And that brother right there looks like he added about 10 pounds of muscle. He is getting yoked up. I mean, seriously, he looks like Motor did last year, last offseason. Remember what Motor looked like? Remember when he came out with that picture and he was just all, you know, jacked up and swole up? Like, that's what Gabe is doing. He's putting in work. He is putting in work in the offseason, man, and he's getting stronger. He's getting bigger. He's getting faster. Yo, I, I, I'm excited about Gabe Davis. I am excited about Gabe Davis. But now let's keep it moving. Number three on the depth chart, we've got my man, Lil Dirty, Isaiah McKenzie. We re-signed him. He's back with the Bills on a... Uh, I think he's on a two-year deal, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he's, a, he's on a two-year deal with the, with the Buffalo Bills. McKenzie, man, look, I think McKenzie's been slept on by a lot of, a lot of Bills fans. He's been slept on. When you, when you look at, at, at what he's done, now granted, he's not a huge stat guy, but man, when you need him to make a play, when you need him to get in the, in, in the game, whether it's spot duty for Cole Beasley or 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 doing some 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 other things, man, he has done nothing but produce. He's done nothing but produce, and so I'm glad that the Buffalo Bills rewarded him for his play and for his performance with a two-year deal. McKenzie last year had, you know, a modest 20 receptions, 178 yards, and a touchdown. But when you look at what he did at certain moments in the game, the Patriots game comes to mind. He, I mean, he took that game over for Cole Beasley. And I think that was a game, the signature game, that showed what he really could add to the team, to the offense. He brings a different dynamic to the slot position than Beasley did. No disrespect to Cole Beasley. I appreciate what he did for the Buffalo Bills in his, in his time with us. But he can't do what, what McKenzie can do. McKenzie's got that that that. Four, that sub 4-4 four, four speed, right? But on top of that, McKenzie is quick. 
He can get in and out of his breaks quickly, but he can stretch the field a little bit more. He's not just that, you know, intermediate guy, but he can actually he can actually uh, go a little further in the in, in in the route tree, right? Whereas Cole Beasley couldn't really do that. So I love what 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 uh what a little dirty brings to the table, man. And on top of that, you know you got you know you got your little gadget plays, your gimmick plays, and then I like how Dable used them last year in the backfield at times. You know, kind of like how the Niners used Debo Samuel. You know, I don't foresee them using uh, McKenzie like that a whole lot, but to sprinkle that in a little bit here and there, it keeps defenses uh, on their toes, right? So. You know, I, I I I love I love McKenzie. Um, I'm glad we have him here for at least a couple. I mean, for a couple of more years, and I'm excited to see what he can bring to the table. But you know, leave it up to Brandon Bean and Sean McDermott to add competition. They're all about competition, and what they did in the off season, it was in free agency was they brought on Jamison Crowder. Jamison Crowder from the New York Jets. Jamison Crowder, slot machine guy, slot guy. I don't know if you guys know him from Washington. I remember him, you know, vaguely from 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 Washington. And and when I saw him then, I was like, yo, this dude, this dude is really good. Like he's a nice receiver. Okay, really, really good slot receiver. Last year with the Jets, he had a pretty good year. He ended the year with fifty-one receptions. 447 yards, two touchdowns. That is not bad at all when you look at it. 51, 447, two touchdowns. That's not bad, all right? Over his career, though, this is what I want to talk about. Look over his career. Over his career, he averages about 58 receptions a year, all right? And averages about 660 and yards a year. So that's kind of like the baseline what we can expect from Jamison Crowder. You know, in a starting role, though. Okay. That's if he's starting full time in the slot position, we can expect him to get about 58 receptions, 600 plus yards a year. All right. That's very good. Now, there's going to be competition between him and, and Isaiah McKenzie. You know, the, may the best man win. Crowder is only signed to a one year deal. Okay, so so, you know, maybe he's there to push McKenzie a little bit. Um, we'll see what happens. But I love the I love the 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 the, the flexibility that we're gonna have in the slot to have two slot guys like that. The Crowder's got the experience edge over McKenzie, right? So we're gonna see what it's gonna look like um, in camp, and I'm excited about it. But I love Crowder. I love what he brings to the table. And look, look, he's a very good receiver. Ask Tremaine Edmonds. How good he is. And Tremaine will tell you, remember that game against the Jets? I remember a play, man, and what, what Crowder took, what looked like a wide receiver screen, I think it was. I man took it to the house. Took it to the house. Wide receiver screen, and here comes Tremaine running and, and, and missed the tackle. And there goes Crowder. Boom. Took it off. Took off. Left everybody in the dust for a touchdown. The guy's got speed, too. Okay. Now, those are the top four wide receivers um, on the roster. Now, we have others, okay, but they're unproven. We've got Jake Kumaro, right, who we know and we, we really believe that he's just, you know, a special teams guy. I like Jake, um, but he's getting up there in age. He's about 30 years, going to be, going, going to be 30 years old, I think. Um, he's a special teams guy, okay? Then we got Isaiah Hodgins, who was drafted in the same year, with Gabe Davis, but he has not proven anything. The guy has not been able to stay on the field. He can't. He he, he can't be. He's he's never been healthy, his entire time being here in Buffalo. He has never been healthy, never. So I mean, what are we to expect from him? Are we to expect you know him to have this breakout season or this breakout year? I mean, we don't know. We really don't know. Um, about a Hodges, and, and, and it's kind of unfortunate because I was looking forward to seeing him when we when we drafted him, but now he's just buried in the depth chart. And then we've got Marquez Stevenson. I don't know about him, you know. I mean, he, you know, I, I thought he was going to be a slot guy, but he he can he can't really do that. Um, he's going to return kicks, but then he's 
been inconsistent at that. So I don't know. Maybe he's going to get another shot at it, you know, in the return game. Um, but he's another guy who's buried on the roster. And then we've got Tanner Gentry, um, Josh's ex-teammate um, in college. So we've got eight guys here currently right now at wide receiver. The top four are in, right? The bottom four, we don't know what's going to happen. So how do you feel about the wide receiver position, guys? Let me know how you feel in the comments. How would you rate this position? How would you rate them? For me, I'm going to rate them with that, that shush emoji. That shh. You know, and I say that because I believe that this position, these guys right now, especially the top four, they're going to be making some silent moves, man. Like, like these guys are going to have a shh. Don't say nothing, but just prove it type of year, right? Like for real. Like I, like, I, 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 I'm, I'm excited about that, especially, especially about Gabe Davis. Gabe, I, I'm pumped about Gabe Davis. I don't know about you guys, man, but I, I think Gabe is gonna blow up this year. He's gonna explode this year, and people are talking about, well, what are you gonna do in the draft? You know. Are we going to draft a wide receiver? Maybe we're going to draft one in round one or, or second round. What are we going to do? Should Bean look to the draft, right? Should, should Bean take a wide receiver early in the draft? Um, or should he just wait later into the, into the, into the draft? Because after all, uh, Gabe Davis was a, was a fourth-round draft pick. And then you got to look at Isaiah McKenzie on a two-year deal. You got Jamison Crowder on a one-year deal. And then you've got Diggs needing an extension, right? So you have to weigh all of that too. And so I think that moving forward, um, as we approach the draft, I think Brandon Bean definitely needs to add at least one more wide receiver to the fold, right? You've got, I mean, because as long as Josh Allen is the quarterback of the Buffalo Bills and he's healthy and he can still sling it, you need to keep the wide receiver room full. Not just full of just people, but I mean, you know, but you need to have quality depth. You know, much like the defensive line, you know, can go almost 10 deep. The wide receiver room needs to be deep. I'm not saying we need to have 10 stud wide receivers on the field, right? That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that the position needs to be deep because heaven forbid one guy goes out. What happens if, if Diggs goes out? And all we're, and, and, and Bean does not draft a wide receiver. And all we have on the roster are Davis, McKenzie, and Crowder. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be pressing the panic button a little bit there. Okay? And so we don't want that to happen, right? And, and, and I don't think Bean is going to let that happen. Um, he's, 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 a, he's a very safe guy. He likes to, he likes to make sure he's, he's covered, right? He likes to ensure himself. And so I'm looking, I'm, I'm expecting him to add a wide receiver at some point in the draft. Now, will he draft him in the first round? Man, that's a tough question. Granted, there are some very good wide receivers, but this, this draft is deep. I mean, a wide receiver, very deep. You can get them probably at least to the fourth round, maybe even fifth round. Uh, you, and it's just kind of a, you know, pick your flavor kind of thing, right? It depends on what they're looking for. And how the board falls to him in the first round, I don't know. Um, would I be opposed to a wide receiver in round one? Maybe. Because you got to think about, well, how is he going to fit in the offense? You already have Diggs. You already got Davis. Right? And then you're going to have a, a, a battle between McKenzie and Crowder. Josh loves the slot guys, right? Those, those short to intermediate routes. But then... Don't forget, we got Dawson Knox and now O.J. Howard, too. So if you add a wide receiver early in the draft, I mean, he's going to be buried in the progression. Do you really want to invest a first-round pick in a wide receiver who's probably going to be your fourth option? I don't know. I, I don't think I would do that. But like I said, it just depends on, on how the board falls, right? But we'll see. But I definitely believe that there's at least a guy that he can get in rounds two or three or four going forward. Okay, so I rate 
this position, man, with that shh, because I think that they're going to make some noise, but people ain't going to really be talking about it. It's going to be one of those shh, don't say nothing. Remember Josh? Remember Josh in that game when and, uh, I think he was playing the Steelers when he was talking about, about Juju? Let them do all the dancing and all that kind of stuff. We just play ball, right? You know what I'm saying? It's going to be one of them things, man. It's going to be like, Psh, don't it, we ain't got to say nothing about it, baby. We just going to do the doggone thing. That's how it's going to happen. All right. So that's how I rate the wide receiver position going forward. And now let's take a look now into the cornerback room. The cornerback room. My gosh. Oh, goodness. Uh, guys. All right. I don't want to jump ahead of myself. Okay. Let's look at it. Cornerback position right now. Trey White. Dane Jackson. Tron Johnson. We got Elijah Griffin, Cam Lewis, Nick McLeod, and then Saran Neal, who, according to the website, the team website is listed as, as, a, as a nickel cornerback. Okay. Which I thought he was safety, but they, they've, got him, they've got him slotted as a, as a backup um, nickel corner to Teron Johnson. So now, the cornerback position, man, we have to start with Tredavious White. We can't even get any further into this without talking about Tredavious White. And, and, and oh, man, I'm hoping that we can get Trey back, you know, sooner rather than later. But at full strength, right? He brings so much to the defense. I mean, he essentially erases half the field. We know what kind of an impact Tredavious White has on this team. He is phenomenal. Right, phenomenal. And he is very, very missed, right? Severely missed. Um, and we saw it last year in the division around. Brandon Bean always says your weaknesses show up in the last game of the season in the playoffs. It showed up there. Cornerback position. We try to defend Pat Mahomes and all those receivers. I mean, come on now, without Trey, it, it was a tough task. Which is why we knew it. The, the person who had the ball last was gonna win the game. This is how it played out, right? We, we, we didn't have our lockdown corner, man. It, it, made, it made a difference. It made a difference. Glad that, that Hill is no longer on, on, you know, uh, on the Chiefs, but we, now we got to deal with him in Miami, which is a whole other story and a whole other topic to deal with, okay? The AFC is loaded. It's just ridiculous, okay? So now we look at the, at the cornerback position. We don't, we're, we're not going to have Trey. We're not going to have Trey. I doubt he starts at the beginning of the year. We're probably not going to see him until – October, maybe November. I don't know. God, I hope it's not that far. Guys, pray. <laughs> pray for Trey. Pray for Trey. Pray for Trey that he comes back healthy and soon, okay? But beyond Trey, because like, we have to act like he's just not here right now. He's on the back burner. He's on the shelf. He's in the oven cooking. And so now that leaves us with Dane Jackson. And... A bunch of other dudes. <laughs> no disrespect. No disrespect. But they but they don't start for a reason. Okay. Elijah Griffin, Nick McLeod, Cam Lewis, they're not starting for a reason. Okay. We just got Dane Jackson, y'all. That's all we got. We let go of Levi and Wallace, which I'm glad we did. I respect him for what he brought to the team. You know, but I felt like we can do better. Now, I believe that Brandon Bean and Sean McDermott, they, 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 they have a level of faith in Dane Jackson. But look, this is so incredibly nerve-wracking for me. And I know Brandon Bean is not sleeping at night when he thinks about the cornerback position. Guys, we have no depth, no, no quality depth. Who's going to play alongside Dane Jackson until Trey White gets here? But what are we going to do? We don't know Trey's timetable. Do we think that Dane is a, is a CB2? Or was he CB2 by default last year when he stepped in the game? Like, is he, is he a legit CB2? A guy that you can put on the other side of the field and don't really have to worry about him. Now, I know a lot of people may say, well, you know, we've, as long as we got Micah Hyde and Jordan Poirier back there, you know, we're going to be all right. Yeah, but you don't want to rely on them all the time to have to, you know, 
protect a cornerback who is mediocre. We don't want to have to rely on that. We want to have a guy who can hold his own. And having Micah Hyde and Jordan Porter behind him, it's just, it's just icing on the cake, right? And so when you think about Dane Jackson, I mean, I like him, but can we do better? I mean, he, I mean, is he better than Levi Wallace? I mean, well, I think Dane Jackson actually made Levi expendable, right? And when we look at the contract that Levi Wallace signed in Pittsburgh, I mean, four mil a year, I mean, that, that, that wasn't a whole lot. Being let him walk for Dane Jackson, okay? But I'm still uneasy. And, and I know Brandon Bean, and you guys know him as well. He does not like to go into the draft desperate. He does not like to go into the draft with holes, glaring holes where he has to feel like, where he feels like, yo, if I if I get out of this round without this player at this position then we're in trouble he does not like that he likes to use free agency to fill needs so that way when he goes into the draft he can take best player available now what i think bean is going to do and and this is really his mo is he likes to add a vet to a room and then go into the draft and, and add another rookie. Right? That's kind of and that's kind of what I foresee uh, Brandon Bean trying to do, trying to add a veteran. Maybe it's a low tier vet, a low cost vet, somebody who can just be the bridge, you know, somebody who can who can you know, uh, at least help out um until Trey White gets here, but then also maybe adding a guy in the draft, a developmental guy probably in the draft, right? Well, that makes perfect sense because we heard um, uh, just what was it a, a couple of days ago, a few days ago, that that uh, the Buffalo Bills uh, supposedly were in the running for Patrick Peterson, who happened to go back to Minnesota and sign with the Vikings. So the Bills were supposedly in on Patrick Peterson. They wanted to add that vet to the defense, to the cornerback position. And so if that's the case, then we know what Brandon Bean is thinking. He's trying to add a wide receiver, I mean, a a cornerback. He's trying to add a vet. But on top of that, guys, there was news that came out. Um, And let me see here. The BF... Uh, even retweeted it. That Bleacher Report, okay, was reporting on NFL rumors that the Bills, the Chiefs, and the Eagles have interest in signing Stephon Gilmore. I don't know how you feel about that, but if there's any truth to that, I am all for it. Stephon Gilmore, even at this stage in his career, I think he's 31 years old, he can still play. And to me, man, you bring him on the team, I feel a whole lot more comfortable with him and Dane until Trey gets back, opposed to a rookie in Dane that, that hasn't proved himself in the NFL yet. We got a pro bowler, Super Bowl winning, all pro cornerback in Stephon Gilmore coming back to Buffalo, potentially, maybe. Yeah, sign me up for that. Sign me up for that. And then when Trey comes back, listen, now this is all hypothetical here. Now, when, when Trey comes back, then you've got Tredavis White and Stephon Gilmore. Because I fully believe that Gilmore is still better than, than Dane Jackson. Dane Jackson will be depth at that point, you know, at least for a year, right? And then on top of that, another rookie, maybe. So now, I mean, that, that I feel I would feel a whole lot better if that is true. But I don't want to get my hopes up 
about that particular rumor. Because we also know that at the time when the Bills signed Von Miller, I believe it was either, I think it was Ian Rappaport or it may have been Adam Schefter. I think it was Ian. He had said that the Buffalo Bills were essentially lying in the weeds when it came to Von Miller. That their thing is, man, Brandon Bean, he doesn't let anybody know that they're players. He, 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 man, he moves in silence. He's a silent killer. Nobody knows the moves he's making. One Bills drive, the front office is hush mouth, sensual. They don't let anything out. And so he was saying, if you hear the Bills uh, name involved in, 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 in any type of player or any type of you know free agent or trade acquisition, or whatever the case may be, you probably don't believe it because they don't let anything out. So with that being said, that's why, you know, when I'm starting to hear these, these rumors about, well, the Bills could be in on Stephon Gilmer. I, I don't know. But just because of that, right? I mean, I'm sure the Bills called. I'm sure Brandon Bean did that, right, because he's going to do his due diligence. But how serious is he? How serious is he in, in trying to actually bring Stephon Gilmore back? I don't know. That could be agent talk, right, trying to, trying to generate some more interest and more dollars in Stephon Gilmore. I don't know. We don't know. We'll see. But I do believe that Brandon Bean is going to look to try to add a cornerback on this team at some point, a, a veteran. If it's not before the draft, it's probably going to be after the draft when we start having roster cuts and all that kind of stuff in camp. Okay. So with that being said, how do I rate this room how do i rate the cornerback position right now look i'm gonna tell you right now it's very easy very simple for me i rate this room with the emo this this following emoji that that eek emoji you know that 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 that's that shot's kind of that one with the teeth yeah that one because i'm nervous i don't feel good right now about it yeah we have the number one defense but we don't have trey and our cornerback depth is like is Oh, it's so bad right now. And so I am nervous. I'm biting my fingernails. I'm, I'm, I'm sweating bullets. I mean, I'm doing all of that because I am so nervous about this position going forward. Do we just, I mean, does Bean just, just wait until free agency with Dane Jackson only? And, and, you know, just depth like the rest of those guys? I mean, come on. I don't think he can do that. I don't think you can do that. I'll tell you why. Because, look, there's a, I don't know if you guys saw this or not. This is why you can't really just rely um, on the draft because there, there's so many variables that we just don't know, right? So many things that can happen that we just don't know. And um, when I look at it, if, if, if Brandon Bean was going to wait for the draft. If he said, you know what? I'm not going to sign a cornerback right now. I'm just going to wait till the draft and, and add a corner. He is rolling the dice. Okay, rolling the dice. And I said that because this. Um, Bucky Brooks. We know Bucky, right? Bucky Brooks. NFL analyst, he put out a mock draft, and I'm trying to I'm trying to find it right now. He put out he put out a mock draft here. I was just looking at it, and then I lost it. Oh, here it is. He put out a mock draft um, a few days ago, and look, I've said this before, and I'm gonna say it again after I read this to you. You better watch out, okay, in this draft. Look, he has, and I'm going to count them. Watch. Um, number four, the Jets, they select Sauce Gardner. First cornerback, the consensus number one cornerback in the draft goes number four overall to the New York Jets. Very, very likely. Okay, let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. Oh, number 11, 
to the Washington Commanders goes Derek Stingley Jr. That's number two. Top two corners already gone within the first 11 picks of the draft. Oh, buddy. This is when it gets, this is when it gets crazy. Immediately after, at number 12, the Minnesota Vikings select Andrew Booth. That's three. In 12 picks, three corners, gone. 14, the Ravens, Trent McDuffie. That's four. All right? Oh, you think we're done? No, he's not done. At pick number 21 to the New England Patriots, Roger McCreary. And that's a guy that a lot of people were, were, were saying that, that, oh, the Buffalo Bills can get this guy. You know, he's kind of reminiscent of, of Tredavious White in a lot of areas. That's five corners already. Okay, gone. Let's keep going. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. That's it. Five corners going ahead of Buffalo. Five corners. Now, this is a, now, of course, this is a mock draft, okay? We know these things are likely not to happen in terms of, as far as like, you know, how people are, are mocking him. But the fact of the matter is, he has, it's, it's a realistic possibility here. Five cornerbacks being selected before the Buffalo Bills get to pick 25. Okay, and he, and he has the Bills picking Zion Johnson. Okay, very good pick. But, but my point is this. If Brandon Bean wants to sit and wait until the draft before he adds another cornerback to this, uh, to this room and he decides to sit at 25, look, 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 look I, I'm nervous. Okay, I know he's big baller Bean and all that kind of stuff, but look, you don't want to go into the draft like that. You don't want to do it because there are so many unknowns that can take place. If he decides to sit back at 25, look, we just saw in the mop five cornerbacks going ahead of the Bills. Five of them. Is, is, do you expect the Buffalo Bills to, to, to select the sixth best cornerback just for the sake of getting it? All right? That's what Brandon Bean was saying that he did not want to do. He does not want to go into the draft desperate saying that if I get out of this round without this guy, then we're in trouble. Well, if he does not add a cornerback to this room, a cornerback to this room, and he goes into the draft with just Tredavis White sitting on, you know, uh, 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 you know uh, with the torn uh, ACL rehabbing, and Dane Jackson with Elijah Griffin, Cam Lewis, and Nick McLeod, and he thinks that he's just going to work some mat- – look, that is that, – that is, you don't want to do that. That's desperate. That's desperate. Okay, unless he's going to put all the chips in and jump all the way up into the top 10, at least for one of these top two corners, whether it be Sauce Gardner or Derek Stingley. Yo, then I don't I, I don't feel comfortable at all. And the reason I see five corners going is because we look at the landscape of the league now. It's a passing league for the most part, right? And then you look at a lot of the teams that have, that have gotten better. You look at the AFC. Look at all the talent. Look at the quarterbacks they've got in, that, in this conference. You look at the wide receivers now in this conference. You need cornerbacks on your team. You need to go at least three deep, at least three, three or four deep. That's why I can easily see five cornerbacks going before the Bills at 25. Easily. So, man, I am nervous right now about this position. I am nervous, right? That's my emoji face. That, that, that's my face. That's my nervous face. I'm, like I said, I'm biting nails, all that kind of stuff. How do you feel? If you feel better, help me out, okay? Talk me off of, off of the ledge, okay? I mean, talk, I mean, don't talk me off. <laughs> talk, talk me from jumping off of the ledge, all right? Because I'm getting pretty close here. I'm getting pretty close. I don't feel good about the cornerback position at all. That is a huge glaring hole that needs to be filled yesterday. So I don't know, Brandon Bean, if you're listening, man, I'm not saying you're not doing anything. I'm just saying you need to do whatever you're doing a whole lot quicker. Make me feel better. Okay. So, guys. We talked about the wide receivers. We talked about how I would rate them. And I rate them that. Shh. All business, baby. Straight business. 
I love what we're doing right now, especially when you look at the top four of our receivers on this team, and then what we can potentially add in the draft in a deep wide receiver draft class. Man. And then when you look at the cornerback position, I am I'm so nervous. I am so nervous. So how do you rate the cornerback position? Let me know how you feel in the comments, and let me know how you rate the wide receiver position as well. All right? But guys, look. That is all I have for you today on another episode of Rated Rev brought to you by the Buffalo Fanatics, where it's Buffalo versus everybody. Till next time, you know my saying, grace and peace. God bless and go build.